Hello everyone. Uh, so good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us to explore the OpenShift GitOps and how it transforms the way we manage the application deployments. So let me introduce myself first. I am Neha Palodia. I work at Red Hat as a software quality engineer. And I am also an active contributor with the Kubernetes release teams. Like I have been uh, working with those folks uh, since last seven cycles with the uh, different roles. And yes. And yes, my name is Deera Singh Jodha. I also work at Red Hat as a software quality engineer. So this is how the agenda looks like for today. And we'll start by exploring how CI CD is generally implemented by common tools in the market today. And then we'll cover up some fundamental concepts and some tools that we have like Argo CD, GitOps. And so this is just to understand what eventually is OpenShift GitOps in the end. Then we'll revisit the CI CD workflow to understand how it works with OpenShift GitOps. This will be followed by two live demos. In first demo, we'll be seeing how we can deploy specific images to multiple environments using Argo CD. And the second demo will be about how we can automatically dynamically generate application instances using again Argo CD or OpenShift GitOps. So does that sound good? I hope the answer is yes, because slides are already there. We cannot edit it. So let's start by looking at how the CI CD is implemented right now in most of the projects. So looking at the CI workflow, we have a user. Let's say they make a change to their code repository, and that change is then detected by a CI pipeline. Let's, let's say we have a, U, a CI tool like Jenkins. It sees that change, and then it tries to create an image out of it. And then when this image gets created with these latest changes, this image is then get tested by any kind of sanity checks that you might be having or any E2E flow or any test that you have. And based on the results, you can promote it to the higher environments. And then uh, if you're satisfied with it, if you think that it can be promoted, then it will be pushed to a container registry like Docker or Quay or whatever you like. Right, so then after this image is get populated or pushed to the container registry, we, would, we can have a CD tool like Jenkins as an example in this case. It will watch out for those changes in the registry, and then it will reflect the latest change, uh, the image there, and it will, it's going to update the Kubernetes manifest file there with this latest image. Now, manifest file is just a term for all those YAML or JSON image uh, files, which contains the desired state of your Kubernetes resources. So when the manifest file gets updated, after that, it's going to apply those changes to the cluster. Why? Because we need to make sure that this latest changes are reflected back to the cluster itself, right? And when those changes get reflected back, we would have all those applications that are deployed there working well with those things that we expected. And uh, we will be using, the tool can use kubectl to apply those changes. Now, this is just one way to implement CI CD here. And, uh, there are a few challenges definitely with this approach. So let's take a look at them in the next few slides. So in this setup that we saw previously, we noticed that it needs to have some tools installed already. For example, we should have kubectl in order to uh, apply the changes back to the cluster. It needs to have, let's say, Helm. It can have, it should also have a Q uh, customize, right? In order to work with the manifest files. So these tools should be there already installed in your Jenkins instance, and that can be boring. It's not the best use of your time. We can do something better than that. And another thing is that we need to also configure access to these files so that they can access uh, the Kubernetes cluster where we are eventually uh, pushing and applying these changes. So we need to store some of those credentials related to the cluster back to the Jenkins instance. And from a security point of view, as well as from the configuration point of view, this is not uh, safe and not really fun. So, because imagine you have like 50 clusters that is, is getting managed by Jenkins as a CD tool. That's a lot, you cannot do everything manually, that's, that's boring. And other than that, you know, it's really hard to even monitor the status of the changes that you have applied to the cluster. Like, let's say you have promoted this image to cluster. Did it work well? Did it crash something? If yes, oh, mostly it would have or not, then you would need to troubleshoot it. How would you do that? Can you do it on Jenkins UI? It would be a little difficult. You 
you would find yourself using the kubectl CLI and then looking at the pods, OC get pod, kubectl get pod, and looking at its health and all that. It's, that's how you would be doing manually in some situations. And that could be boring, I think. So this, all of this leads to one question. That is, can the situation be improved? Answer is, of course. Yes, I hope. Yes, of course. So we can use uh, OpenShift GitOps. Uh, and now this leads to the another question, what exactly is uh, GitOps? So yes, GitOps is a set of practices uh, to manage the infrastructure and application configurations using Git. And GitOps automates uh, deployments and creates the repeatable processes for your clusters and applications uh, across different environments and with supporting continuous deployment processes. And now teams can take the advantages of the Git workflows to drive their cluster operations and application delivery uh, to enable the predictable and more secure changes, right? So at the same time, observability and uh, visibility of the actual states of the applications and the possible configurations drifts can also be detected. Uh, through the GitOps workflow, right? So GitOps allows you to maintain the full transparency uh, with the Git audit capabilities and provides the state forward mechanism to roll back uh, your desired version uh, across multiple clusters and uh, yes, OpenShift and Kubernetes clusters. So to influence you all a bit, like let's take a quick look at the statistics from the CNCF's latest microsurvey on GitOps. Now, they found that 31% uh, of the respondents uh, started using GitOps in their cloud and the Kubernetes environments during the past 12 months. And they joined the 60% who would be uh, working with GitOps for a year or more. So, and now this leads to the another question. Now, what exactly is OpenShift GitOps? Right, so what is OpenShift GitOps? Before that, I would like to talk about a key component of OpenShift GitOps, that is Argo CD. So what is that? Before that, and now it's going to make few, uh, sense in a few seconds, my question is, how many of you have watched at least one of the Harry Potter movie? At least one. It should be all. No? Oh, yes? Most of them, yes. That's amazing. And uh, out of all those movies, have you watched Prisoner of Azkaban by any chance? Nice. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Thanks, guys. So in that movie, you might have seen there's a map called Marauder's Map, if I'm sp uh, pronouncing it correctly, correctly. So there's this map. It shows you the location of each and every person in Hogwarts, wherever they are roaming around. Like you can see uh, Peter Pettigrew who's there. You can see all of that thing. So this is similar to how, kind of similar to how Argo CD would work as well. So Argo CD has access to the location of all the applications within your cluster where they are, how they are working, are there any problem with them? If there is a problem, let's fix it. So Argo, Argo CD does that automatically. It has access to all the things that are going on in your cluster. Similar to, of course, uh, Marauder's Map, it has access to everyone in the Hogwarts school. So this, this is the kind of relationship between both of these things. And uh, yeah, to, so coming back to the technical aspect of it, how does it work? So let's say we have a repository that contains the application code. So this, this uh, repository contains all the things that you want to have in your Kubernetes cluster. So th that's stored there. And it, uh, Argo CD constantly looks at this repository for any kind of change. So if you make any changes there, let's say you increase the pod count from two to three, let's say, then Argo CD would quickly detect that, like, hey, something had happened there. Let's take a look at this. And it sees that, okay, you, you increase the amount of pods, then it would quickly go to the cluster and it will increase the power count as well. So it just constantly looks at that file. And yeah, in between it would look at if there's any difference, it would find that difference and it would shout like, hey, out of sync. So it will say that it's out of sync and you have two options. You can either manually sync it or you can ask Kubernetes to automatically just sync it whenever it detects a drift, as they say technically. So after it detects a change, it, it will bring it to the desired state and then it repeats this till eternity. It constantly looks at your repository and does the same thing forever. And yeah, there's a, re there are re there's a really strong reason why Argo CD is really popular because of its declarative workflow where it lets you define all your configurations in a Git repository. And then it also supports both push and pull based workflow. So really quickly, like pull based workflow is like this, 
Argo CD and it will pull all the changes, constantly look at the GitHub repository and pull the changes and apply them to the cluster. On the other side, push based is like you would have on, on this other side, the Git repository, whenever you make any kind of change with the help of some workflow, uh, a webhook, sorry, it will push those changes to Argo CD and then it will apply the changes to the cluster. And it's also, of course, all of these automation, it's going to lead to least to no manual intervention. And because of the very native and tight integration with the, all the Kubernetes, you have access to open source, tool, open source tools like uh, Prometheus Grafana for monitoring, and you can have uh, benefits of features like rollback in case anything goes wrong. And yep. So yes, now coming back to uh, OpenShift GitOps. So it is an add-on which bundles with the Argo CD, right? And other tools also. To enable uh, this, uh, we need to implement the GitOps workflow uh, for the cluster configurations and the application delivery at the end. Now it is available uh, as an operator in the OpenShift uh, operator hub and which is simple to install with uh, just a single click, right? And so once installed, users can deploy the Argo CD instances via Kubernetes uh, custom resources and taking advantage of this OpenShift GitOps operator with the Argo CD, which enables teams to have the full visibility and the uh, traceability into the changes, uh, which rolled out to the clusters, whether they originate from the cluster configurations or application deployments, it doesn't matter, right? So every change it, uh, which is represented in the Git commit uh, in the history of the repository, uh, which uh, Argo CD emits the Kubernetes events for any changes, uh, will be ultimately pushed to the clusters in order to implement the Git history and it provides a comprehensive view of the whole timeline uh, which uh, updates had been made on the cluster. So now let's sum up uh, what all we had looked previously. So technically speaking, like as we now know that OpenShift uh, GitOps uses the Argo CD for CD workflow uh, with lots of added benefits like uh, using OLM, uh, which manages the life cycle of the OpenShift GitOps operator and which also adds the security benefits uh, of the OpenShift. And then it is having the tight integration with the OpenShift console, providing a unified interface for managing the Kubernetes applications and GitOps workflow. With, uh, which OpenShift GitOps also provides integrated monitoring and observability features through its integration with the Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management and which relies on the external monitoring tools uh, available in the Kubernetes ecosystem, say for example, Prometheus, Grafana, etc. Right? So now how does the CD workflow looks like with uh, OpenShift GitOps? Right, so as we saw previously, we had a slide where, which talks about how CI-CD workflow works for tools like Jenkins as a, when we're using it. So let's see how it works when we use OpenShift GitOps it, uh, instead. So the same workflow, developer makes a change, it goes to the GitHub repository, and then it triggers the CI pipeline to build an image. The image gets pushed to the registry, QA or Docker, anything. And after that image gets pushed to the, to the registry, that new tag or new image gets updated to the source code uh, within your manifest files to have all those changes there. And right when that happens, in this case, we are using a push-based workflow in this diagram. There are some webhooks configured in your repository. It looks for the changes that are happening in your files. And as soon as they happen, it pushes all the changes to the cluster. And the cluster is where Argo CD is deployed. So it's not like uh, a tool like Jenkins. It's uh, not deployed within the cluster. It's outside as an external tool. But in this case, it's deployed inside the cluster itself, where it's managing all the applications. So it get pushed there and Argo CD handles everything after that. It has the access to the latest changes, it applies to the cluster and makes sure that everything is in perfect place. And uh, yeah, yes, so now it's time for a demo. So we're gonna see how we can use OpenShift GitOps to automatically promote custom images to different kinds of environments. So we, the plan is to have like four environments, let's say base environment, production, and staging, development, these environments, and there are four different images, and we're gonna use Argo CD to promote each one of them to their specific places. So we're gonna see how we can modify the manifest files, how do we work with, how do we apply changes to Argo CD to make sure everything happens automatically. 
So let's try to do that. Awesome. So, okay, you are seeing the cluster where the magic is supposed to happen. Before that, okay, I see. Okay, let's try to access it from here. Awesome. Right, so this is the repository that contains all the files that we would need to do the demo. So I'll show you what we are gonna do. So there's this folder called base, and it contains these files. So I think let's try to look at application YAML file. So this is a custom resource called application, which is native to Argo CD project. It, def it lets you define an application in Argo CD. So it contains very important fields, like uh, I think source field, which lets you define the repository that you want Argo CD to constantly look at, right? So in this case, it's this same exact repository, and then it lets you also define the path, the folder where you want Argo CD to constantly look at. In this case, it's base folder, and then the target revision as well. It can have the branch or SHA, anything. Then it lets you define the destination as well, which is the cluster, internal cluster itself, and that's how the application YAML looks like. And I think we do have YAML, deployment YAML file. So this is the image that we would be deploying to the cluster. It contain, it refers to this image that is specific to this environment, which is base environment. And that's, that's what we're gonna try to deploy. And just a note, it's also contained replica set to one. So I'll show you that it actually contains one pod only. And let's go back and one more thing I wanna share with you. This is a service YAML file that lets you define a service so that you can see the UI of this demo. It's there on port 80. And I think there's just one last. This is customization YAML file. Why do we need this? Because this demo is using customize as a tool to work with manifest files. You can do it manually as well, but that's boring. So that's why we are using customize uh, tool to work with these yeah, files. So the way it works is it lets you define the deposit, uh, the folders here and the files that you want to deploy or to the cluster. So there's like, uh, I think, the deployment YAML file and the service YAML file. And I'll not go through all the other folders, but just a quick look, there's an overlay folder. This is as per the naming convention of customize. So under the overlay folder, there's like another uh, different, three other environments that they are uh, present. Uh, development, production, and staging. So just a quick look at development. It's going to have application YAML, which is the Argo CD application and the patch that we want to apply. So this patch is the, like the core of it. Like what do you want uh, to apply specifically for this environment? So I want to apply that it just have only two replicas set for this environment. So I can have a really big deployment YAML file with replica set to two, but that's boring I, uh, and that's lengthy. So I just specify what needs to be changed. So it's just a patch, that's why it's called that. And finally, there's this customization YAML file that lets you define the specific image that you want to deploy. Uh, for this environment. So you would notice that this image is different from the one that we saw previously. And it's the same for all the other environments as well. Right, so this is how the code looks like. Now let's take a look at the core part of it. I'll share the terminal as soon as I figure out where that is. Okay, I'll try to drag it there. Okay, it's coming slowly. 
shy. Right there. Okay. No. Okay, go. Like some Yep, there it is. Are you going to oh sorry, I'm drinking water under. That's fine. Not so much water for you. Well, they showed up yesterday, I don't know. Okay. But that's it, I think. Okay, so I'll tell you what I'm doing on my terminal. I'm just applying the file using OC apply. And the application YAML file that I just show you, showed you, I'm just going to apply those. And So there's our cluster. No, it's still working for the top subject. Yeah. Now I'm trying to log in. Sorry about this, guys. Trying to figure out. If you have previous one, you can just fill that. Just plotting the cluster. Yes. Mm. Okay. Mm. Then call me the second one. Mm. That's fine. You can save one.
try one more time. I think it looks like we are having technical difficulties to log into the cluster. So that is mm, that is the issue. But I'll, I think I do have a document that I should share with you. It will let you know what exactly needs to be done. Um, Right, so I can share what are the steps that, he, that needs to be performed. So for the first demo, we would need to have Docker to work with the images, so you can create your, create your own images. Then you can have customized to manage the manifest files, as I showed you. We would, we're using manifest file to have specific directories, like overlays directory, and each one for each of those uh, multiple environments. Then we, are, we need to have, of course, OpenShift GitOps already installed in your cluster. And then we would need to definitely have a GitOps repository, which would contain the source code of all your application-related configurations uh, that Argo CD would be continuously looking at. Right. So the steps to do that is um, after you've installed the OpenShift GitOps, you would need to clone the repo, of course, and then make sure you're on, the, you're on the main branch. And after that, you need to create all the Argo CD applications for each of those environments that you have. So for example, first, uh, first application would be like OC apply dash F, then supply the application YAML file. And similarly, you can do the same thing for other applications, YAML file as well. So we have four of the applications there. So as soon as you apply all of these, if you, uh, the plan was to go to the Argo CD UI and you would see four applications there that, uh, that were created for it. And now that you have four applications, Argo CD is just set up to look at it. And then we have uh, a sufficient uh, we need to provide some permissions to make sure that it works perfectly. And then you need to go to the Argo CD UI and uh, you need to, uh, you will see that it's all synced and uh, healthy and services are up and running. And then using the service, you can access the UI. And for all four of these applications, you would have four services. And for all four services, you would see that each of them has a different image. So that exactly is the plan. So. We were able to deploy all those four images for all these different uh, applications using just the code that's there on your GitOps repository. And that repository is just linked over there. And can you just quickly scroll down? I'll show you exactly what needs to be done for the second demo as well, which is just running one command. Because, what, because the reason is that the first demo, as I showed you, I need to manually apply four apply commands for all these four applications. Let's say there are 100 applications. You cannot just apply this command 100 times. You, should, you cannot create uh, 100 applications uh, for each one of them. So this needs to be improved, something like that. So what we can do is you can use application sets. That's a file that there is. It, it uses templates and everything, parameters to that. And you apply it. And then it's going to automatically create four applications with just one command. And that is the OC apply dash F and application sets YAML file. And that would be all. It would, you would have the same thing that was there on the first demo as here in this demo, but just with one command. That's the power of application sets. Now, that's, now let's move on to the last slide that we have. It's going to talk about, yeah, so it's going to talk about the use cases that you would have. And I think well, we can sp skip that, and uh, that would be all. So are there any questions for us in order to understand more or any clarity that you need. Um, does this document take from the 
it's not. A, I, I will make it, make sure that it's listed somewhere for sure. Yes, we will just link it in the slides and it will be available. Thank you. Uh, thank sure. you so much. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Looks like now. So thanks a lot, guys, for being so patient with this. I really appreciate your patience, and thanks a lot. Have a good one. Thank you.